Paul Frizel um, from Conde Nast. Um, my, I am the principal engineer of uh, AI infrastructure. Specifically, Conde Nast is a media publisher. We have um, over 20 digital media brands as well as that have a print component to them. And a large part of our business going through 2019 and beyond is making sense of the data on these experiences and the types of products that we want to build. Uh, Conde Nast uh, has over 100 million uh, visitors uh, each month. We have 800 million plus page views. Um, and a lot of those types of uh, events generate a tremendous amount of data on the back end. So whether it's receiving personalized newsletter recommendations from New Yorker or personalized recommendations on sites like Wired.com, uh, these are all parts where behind the scenes are, are driven by our data platform as well as various machine learning models. And one of the biggest pain points we felt with, with Spark on top of vanilla EMR on AWS was trying to manage and appropriately utilize our, our Spark clusters. Um, whether it's scaling them up or scaling them down horizontally there or vertically on that. Um, so the, the first driver for Databricks was, was definitely around the cluster management solution. Um, from that point, we started to take a look at the interactive notebooks on top of that, which were for, for our data science team were a major, major component in their day to day. Today at Conde Nast, um, you know, not only are we using the Databricks platform heavily, but we're using a lot of other components above that as well. In production today, we have over 1,200 models um, live, um, everything from training, scoring, tracking, uh, model serialization. All of that's powered by uh, MLflow. With respect to our data lake solution, historically we've used a lot of Parquet, which has worked very well. But as you scale up and build more complex processes, um, it was quickly apparent that, that using, vanilla, using vanilla Parquet is only part of the story. So when we were originally uh, looking at Delta, uh, what we were looking for was a performance solution. So it had to be at least as fast, if not better, than what we got from uh, the Parquet solutions with Databricks. But it also needed to be uh, both scalable and flexible. Delta provided all of those, um, and we started pretty early on with it. And right now we're using Delta uh, heavily across almost every part of Spire. Databricks has provided a large amount of value, most heavily in terms of lowering the barrier of entry to using a lot of these, uh, these data products, as well as just a general operational efficiency. Um, it allows our data scientists, our data analysts, our data engineers, regardless of their backgrounds, to go and spin up extremely powerful Spark clusters, uh, work in interactive notebooks, deploy models uh, in ways that uh, you know, simply just are not possible via the, the, some of the default platform components. Um, and with Databricks, between the interactive notebooks, between MLflow, between the Spark cluster management, between uh, data solutions such as uh, Delta Lake, um, they give you an incredible starting point to begin building uh, pretty much as quickly as you can think about those products and then ultimately getting those into production to test with and get, get, get feedback um, on if you're doing this the right direction before committing too many more resources to that. You know, Databricks has been an incredibly powerful end-to-end -end solution for us. Um, it's allowed uh, a variety of different team members um, from different backgrounds to quickly get in and, and utilize large volumes of data to make actionable business decisions.